With Watch Dogs Legion almost on our doorsteps with the coming October release and with its recently released amazing gameplay video, I thought about going back to Watch Dogs 2 to see how it stacks up in 2020 and if it's still worth it, especially that you would be able to grab it for a sweet deal these days. What's up everyone and welcome to a new video, my name is Omar with Real Gamer Review and today we are reviewing Watch Dogs 2 almost 4 years after the release. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and liking the video and turn on the bell icon to watch more videos like this one. Without further ado, let's get right into it. When the original Watch Dogs was first announced back in 2012, the series kicked off with a great idea, a Grand Theft Auto style open world to explore combined with gameplay that turned you into a vigilante hacker. But the final game releasing in 2014 didn't live up to the huge expectations of the first announcement and gameplay trailers. Instead, it was repetitive with a frustrating bland story and diminished graphical capabilities unlike the gameplay trailers that we were shown prior to the release. And apparently Ubisoft learned from their mistakes in the second installment of the franchise. While the fundamentals of the first game are still there, but there were a few major changes. Those changes added a lot to the overall experience and made it a lot more fun. As I mentioned before, Ubisoft kept the main aspects of the game, but all the things that the gamer disliked about part 1 were changed. The biggest change, of course, is the main character of the game, as he was replaced with a new hacker under the name of Marcus Holloway. Which is a way better protagonist in my opinion, but still I have a few slight issues with him. His character doesn't actually fit with this game's style, and I'll explain how. So this game is GTA-like with an open world style, missions are fairly similar too. So basically, throughout those missions, you will be encountering the police, innocent people, and private corporate security guards, which in the end are not bad people. And of course, you will be shooting, blowing up a lot of them. But when you see Marcus in the game cutscenes, how he speaks, how he acts around his teammates, and his overall style, his character just doesn't fit the killer personality. Yo, your hot sauce? Yeah, man, I loved your frat house hat. Real talk. Thanks. This weirdo's wrench. The needs of the many. And this Casanova is Horatio. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Oh, Remain calm. If you compare it to the last installment of GTA, the characters fit the role perfectly. You do believe that the three main characters are capable of killing and unleashing mayhem all around the city, but for Marcus, uh, it just doesn't fit, at least for me. Despite that, the overall character gameplay mechanics are pretty awesome, the fighting, shooting, movement and hacking are pretty good, and you would definitely enjoy them. The general movement of the character is pretty realistic with jumping and some parkour capabilities. The shooting is as you would expect with a nice semi-automatic cover system which you can move between different covers with one button click. The stealth mechanics are good as well with hand-to-hand -hand combat and an addition of non-lethal weapons and hackable environment electronics that you can use for undetected attacks. In most of the missions, you will have the option of the stealth approach or full-on weapons attack. As for the vehicles, there is quite a variety, the amount that you would expect from this kind of games. Vehicles in the game have a decent damage engine that looks pretty realistic, but when it comes to the driving and handling itself, I can't stop myself from comparing it with GTA. And the comparison is not in Watch Dogs 2's favorite. Yes, the driving and handling is decent, but still is not as good as GTA, especially with the sense of speed. Maybe it's just me, but I always felt that Watch Dogs 2 and some other open world games never got the sense of the speeding vehicle correctly. When driving on the fastest speed available, it just doesn't feel as fast as it should be. Maybe it's just me, but that's how I feel. Also another thing I noticed, which annoyed me a bit, as I felt it was a bit rushed, is the interior camera view of the cars you drive, which is a cool option, but every car doesn't have its unique interior as real life or Grand Theft Auto. Instead, they have like 3 or 4 different models that are integrated in most of the cars. And also the car dashboard is defocused and the car speedometer and RPM counters are not even working, which is a bit annoying and takes from the interior view experience experience for sure. 
So the story this time kicks in fast from the beginning of the game as you start the game with infiltrating a high security facility as some sort of a challenge from your teammates. And you get the chance also at the same time to erase your criminal record. Another thing worth mentioning is that I really liked how they integrated creating your online character with that very first mission through hacking the facility's computer. Anyway, as I was saying, that is how you begin the story and the game and after successfully completing this mission you get introduced to your team and the story goes on from there. As for the missions themselves, they are pretty good and diverse, with the cool hacking capabilities that Marcus has which mainly gives you the access to the cameras, doors, vehicles, traffic lights, and various electronics and some pretty cool gadgets that you unlock throughout the game that can be used in the missions, and of course in the free roaming gameplay. The story itself revolves mainly around how large corporations and even some governments use the personal data of citizens for their own gain. Marcus in the beginning of the game starts working with a hacking group called DatSec, which are his teammates that I've mentioned before. Throughout the game, DatSec engages everything from smart homes and cities to tech-savvy religious sects organizations. Most of the game, the goal is the same, to expose those who they believe are exploiting people using their personal data. So for the missions, I would say that they are good, as for the story itself, overall it's okay. I wouldn't say it's great, it's just fine and not that memorable. Moving on to the graphics and visuals, I would say that Ubisoft did a pretty good job and for sure it still stands up to 2020 standards. Actually, it was so good at its time, to the point that if you compare it with the next installment of the franchise releasing in October, you probably won't see that much of a difference putting them next to each other. Another thing that I really liked about this game is the quirky hacker style of menus throughout the game and the visuals that pop out when finishing missions and getting followers numbers increasing, and many more. And since you made it this far into the video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on the bell icon. As for the music and audio part, I would say that Ubisoft did a decent job when it comes to this part. Not the greatest thing out there, but decent. As you would expect, like GTA, there are multiple radio stations that you can choose from while in vehicles. Also another welcomed addition is that you can listen to music when on foot as Marcus is wearing earphones all the time. The world environment audio is decent as well with the different sounds of vehicles all the way to the different weapons and fight sounds. So overall a decent experience when it comes to music and audio, nothing extraordinary here. As a conclusion and after playing the game for a while now, I would say that despite the sometimes frustrating hacking missions, overall Ubisoft did a pretty good job and they definitely learned from most of their mistakes in part 1. I would definitely recommend this game if you want a good and mostly fun experience while waiting to get your hands on the next installment of the franchise and the new gen consoles. You also have the added benefit of probably being able to grab it at a pretty decent price point. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to watch more videos like this one.